right. And Jeff, how about you? Um, I'm from Calgary, Alberta. Born and raised till I was 19 years old. And came out uh, east to go to Sheridan College for musical theater uh, when I was 19. And I stayed there for a year and a half of the three-year program, and then I got an offer to go work at the Shaw Festival in Niagara-on-the-Lake, uh, where I stayed for five years. And, and, uh, that must have been a hard decision, Jeff. I mean, weren't the people saying, no, complete your schooling? And <laughs> There was only one teacher in the whole school, actually, who, uh, who thought I should stick around, but every other teacher who was there knew that, uh, as this business can be, when the opportunity presents itself, uh, you jump on it, and uh, and the Shaw Festival is such an amazing place to be. I, I had such a great time learning, uh, and I, I learned so much there. Being around the incredible actors that are there, that uh, it, it was a, a clear decision. And also, at the first year and a half is all classes, and the last year and a half at Sheridan is all performance. Right. So I ended up getting pretty good performance experience over at the show. Well, let's talk about performance experience. Uh, I had the pleasure of watching you in many productions over at the Shaw, and you got to, to play a wide variety of parts there. Do you have favorites that you want to tell us about? Well, uh, yeah, you know, they, they were great in giving me a vast different amount of things to do. I never sort of got locked into playing one kind of part. Um, Floyd Collins was certainly one of my favorite shows that I got to work on there, an incredible musical set in Kentucky about a man who gets trapped in a cave. and uh, But Happy End, Journey's End, of course, was an incredible show set in World War I in the trenches. And uh, with Evan Buehling, uh, was, he and I were co-stars in that, along with a fantastic cast. But uh, that was a really special one. But just a whole, uh, whole number of, of great experiences there. I've been very fortunate to, uh, to get to be in the yes, show. Yes, the Journey's End, and I was fortunate to see the Happy, uh, happy Days, too, were both fantastic, yeah. very good work. And Daniela, have, you've worked, tell us about some of the places you've worked and any favorite parts that you've played? Um, I've worked uh, mostly in Western Canada, uh, places like Edmonton, uh, Regina, Calgary, Vancouver, uh, the regional theatres, smaller theatres. I've done a lot of new Canadian plays, <laughs> um, a lot of those, and which is really exciting. And um, a great one that I did last year, or just last November, was Vimy, which is uh, right. written by Vern Thiessen, that uh, is the writer of Shakespeare's Will. That mm -hmm. was done here last season. Yeah. And uh, that was one of a great experience, that. And uh, also doing Cripple of Inishman, a great Irish play that I did at Theatre Calgary. Yeah. Vimy's a beautiful play. I, I, I've read it, but I haven't been able to see it. So, mm. yeah. And I enjoyed you very much in The Cripple of Inishman. Oh. Well, wonderful, but uh, very different from Helen. Very different. So <laughs> Same character this. name, but very different. <laughs> so we've got lots of questions, but let's stick with the ones that have to do with these parts at the inception. What were your auditions like, someone wants to know? Uh, they were a bit terrifying. I auditioned in Vancouver, actually. Right. And, uh, and it was exciting. It's a very, it's kind of a very, it was a very long process. I auditioned in January, I think, and then um, again in Toronto in April, and it's, it's, it's nerve-wracking, I would have to say. Yeah. Yeah, but obviously it was successful and nerve-wracking. Yeah, and nerve-wracking. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeff, how about you? Well, I went through two auditions. The first one was for another part of the <laughs> Um, and I had a lot of scenes to work on for that, which was uh, okay. which was really fun. And then, uh, and, and that was for uh, yeah. Then, then I got got back for uh, just for Marty for All's Well, and uh, auditioned just for Bertram. And uh, she uh, was on a quick trip just in town for one night and booked a conference room in a hotel, little room, and and uh, just we went through the scenes four times. Actually, what was incredible about my audition was uh, an actor who I worked with at Soul Pepper when I was just there, uh, Ken Welsh, who's one of our country's greatest treasures. Uh, he, uh, he de devoted so much time in, in coaching me uh, several weeks and, and, and actually, you know, he's a real legend of the stage. He played Hamlet here, of course, back in the 60s and, uh, and he uh, said, well, why don't I come in and read with you? So for both of my auditions, he came in and read opposite of me, which uh, was very selfless of him and made me feel very comfortable and, uh, and uh, <laughs> I think was very helpful in, in, getting, in, in getting here. For sure. Well, you know, and getting hearing this from your perspective, because of course I was speaking to Marty along the way, and she gave this great deal of thought and was delighted with the auditions. And you know, it took. It's from a director's perspective, these are such important decisions, and she obviously thought both of you were by far the best choices, and uh, and spoke very highly of you throughout. So it's a happy marriage of talents. Now, what about Bertram and? Uh, and Helena, <laughs> why don't you tell us a little bit about what, what's the story about? For those that don't know All's Well That Ends Well, what is the play about? 
Well, I don't know. Let's see. Well, I'll tie it into the audition as well because I think uh, you know Bertram can be uh, often sometimes seen as an unpalatable character in his, <laughs> his choices that he makes. And, uh, and in, the, in the audition, I talked about how uh, I feel that I can really get on board and, and uh, I think, you know, understand, I hope, what, uh, what drives this guy. Oh, basically, he, he uh, sets out at the beginning of the play, his, his father has died, and uh, he's going to be sent to live with the king as his new ward. Uh, he'll be leaving the, uh, the count. Uh, where he was county before, uh, and uh, and uh, Helena comes into the play. Who uh, Helena is a poor physician's daughter, and her father has died. And uh, Bertram's mother, the Count Countess Rosillian, who's played by Martha Henry, takes her under her wing and takes her in, in ward essentially as well, and lets her live there. And Helena, we discover, is madly in love with Bertram, but she is far below. His station. Yes, she's a poor physician, <laughs> doctor. Those exactly. were the days. <laughs> Time That's to right. <laughs> and uh, so, he's, yes. a, he's a count, and he leaves to go and be with the king, and she um, finds a way to. The king's also very ill. He's very ill. He's dying, and uh, Helena thinks she has a cure to help cure the king. This is really something. Helena thinks she has a cure. Mm -hmm. And she goes, and she has enough conviction and belief in herself to not only have the courage to go there, yes. but to persuade the king. That's right. She persuades the king, and she heals him. And he rewards her by allowing her to choose a husband. Seems reasonable. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Does it? <laughs> and, uh, and you choose? It just she chooses Bertram. Yeah. And Bertram, it must be like having your sister chase you down and propose marriage. A, a little way, bit. Right? Yeah. It's oh. a little bit of a surprise. Well, you know, Sorry. They, they, <laughs> we think, you know, they, they grew up together, really, right. and, and they, they have an understanding of who each other are, and yet um, there's quite a difference in, in their lives. Um, so it's quite an interesting moment when suddenly everything you've been living your life towards, and, you know, he wants to go off to war and become a great warrior. And, uh, and find his honor there, and he wants to experience life for himself. Maybe meet some women along the way, or do whatever uh, one does as they grow yeah. <laughs> up in this world, I guess. Not but for you, though. <laughs> not for Bertram. No, no, no he uh, suddenly, that path is said for him, no, you're going to do this. And, and he, uh, he takes issue with that, and, and, uh, and says, no, I do not want to. Uh... And even though the king's really firm, I mean, the king yeah. is extremely firm mm -hmm. and tells you, boy, what you should be doing, yeah. he runs away, which so shows the same kind of independent spirit that, that Helena has. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And then you run away, you go to the wars, you obviously have a bit of fun along the way, we mm -hmm. hear from the plot line, and, uh, but, but then what happens um, that they manage to get together? Well... <laughs> Do you want to give that away? I don't know. Well, Bertram um, sends her a rejection letter saying, If you can ever be born of child by me and have this ring of mine upon your finger, then I will be your husband. And in that ever, I write a never. I, I basically say that... A challenge. I give her a challenge that I think will be impossible to fulfill. Uh, but... But... <laughs> <laughs> nothing's stopping her. Don't mess with you. That's right. <laughs> no way. Um, I mean, at first, though, when she's rejected by, by Bertram, you know, Helena does run away herself and goes on a pilgrimage and I think learns um, a lot about herself and the nature of love and that and, uh, if she could possibly... He's everything to her and, and if she... Her love will put him in danger. She escapes from that, but there's something about fate and the stars and the heavens which play a huge part in this play, the gods that keep kind of throwing them back together again. And yet it's a very human play, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's about our greatest fears, our fear of death, our mm -hmm. greatest wants, that when you give your love that it'll be requited. Absolutely. And um, so it's, yeah. it's a beautiful I love that about this play. I feel like the psychology is so contemporary in a way, you know, I think it's something, there are some things that are of another time, but uh, those life decisions I think we can all really relate to in a way. And, and seeing people differently. I mean, yeah. you can see someone every single day and not really see them. 